welcome Tom, the mailman for Oscar. Thank you, Carl, very much. Let's start out with a question. How many people here have ever thought of being a mailman? Raise your hand. Who, okay, we got, we got quite a few. Can I give you some advice, Bill Bendorf in the back? Forget it, don't do it! You know why? It is the most dangerous, violent occupation in the world. And I'll tell you why in one word, dogs. You know, now, the perception is, is that mailmen hate dogs, but actually, Dogs hate the mailman, right? Now, how many people have a dog that hates the mailman? Anybody? Okay, Paul, can you stand for a minute? What? Sure. Paul, has the mailman ever beaten your dog? Never. Has he ever kicked a dog? Never. Has he ever done anything to the dog to aggravate it at all? Hasn't touched the dog. My point exactly. Go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> you know, you can take the most gentle joyous little Fido, put him out in front of the yard. He's frolicking around, you know, having fun with the kids. He just loves it. All of a sudden, the mailman walks up. Rawr! 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 You know, they, go, they get vicious and crazy. It's like they're on drugs, like Jekyll and Hyde. I don't know what it is. You know, the worst time. We are in the worst time for dog attacks right now. This is the summer. Now, usually what happens, mom and dad, through the regular part of the year, they keep little Fido pinned up in the yard or in the house, right? What, what's the difference? During the summer, the kids are home, yeah. And they love to play that game, sit the dog or the mailman. Oh, oh, that is so much fun. You know, Mr. Mailman's walking up to the house. He's looking at the mail. You know, he's trying to be an honest servant. Little Johnny sees the mailman, comes up, he says, Fido, Fido, come on, come on. He opens up the door, bam, the dog's after the mailman. He's running around, rah, 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 rah. You know, I'm running around trees. I've even jumped on cars to get away from dogs. And the kids love it, though. They think, oh, that's so much fun. Let's do it, let's do it some more. Until I say enough is enough. And I get out my weapon, my trusty dog spray, and oh, then the story starts to change. Oh, oh, no, no, don't hurt my little doggy. He may want to hurt anybody, please. Don't spray my doggy. Muffy doesn't want to bite. She just wants to play. <laughs> <laughs> then finally, finally, Dad comes out. You know, we've had this battle for five minutes. Dad finally comes out. He grabs his great Doberman or whatever it is, and he's pulling him back in the Doberman's leaning. Arr, arr. And you know what? He's looking at you. He's looking at the mailman as if it's my fault, like I did something, you know, like I attacked the house. And he starts off on me like this. He insults, first of all, he insults your manhood. He says, oh, you're not afraid of dogs, are you? <laughs> yeah, right, like a vicious German shepherd is something to be petted and loved, huh? And then he insults your intelligence. He says, the dog's like this going, Rrr. he says, oh, why don't you come on over and make friends with him, huh? <laughs> put, your, put your hand out, let him sniff you. Yeah, right. Let me ask you a question. Does Sigourney Weaver put her hand in the alien's mouth? No way. Does Richard Dreyfuss put his hand in the jaw's mouth? No way. Am I going to put my hand near a Doberman, Doberman's mouth? No way. You know, I'm a Polak, but I'm not that stupid. <laughs> but you know what I, I hate the most? Who's got a little dog? We got any little, little Oh, I hate those little <laughs> miniature schnauzer, you know, itsy bitsy chihuahua types. They think they're Rin Tin Tin, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. They come running out like they are going to chew you all up. But they're fast, you know. You can't spray them. They are so fast. They're like here and here. They're, they're like Speedy Gonzales. You can't get a hand on them. And then where in the heck? did they get this Rottweiler breed? You know, you know what I'm talking about? They didn't exist 20 years ago. If you haven't seen them, they're a combination of Doberman, German Shepherd, and Godzilla all in one. If it gets loose, it won't bite you. It will kill you. I mean, it's, 
You know, and I don't understand how they came into existence. 20 years ago, we had dachshunds. We had little cute little sausage dogs that would never hurt anybody. You know, you step on them in the middle and they can't bite you. These Rottweilers will kill you if they get hold of you. I, I can sort of envision, like at the end of World War II, the, the Nazis or the Allies are coming in. We must make some ultimate killing machine. And they come up with the Rottweiler breed. So I... I don't know, there's even one that's just worse than that. And it's a popular dog in Webster Groves, if you can believe it. What's even worse than a Rottweiler? A pit bull. You better believe it. You know what? If it grabs onto your arm, it's, you know, you've got to kill it, shoot it in the head. you got to get, the, you know, big bullers to get it out of the way. You, you cannot get rid of these dogs. But for some reason, people love these dogs. They think they're cute. Oh, yeah, real cute. Yeah. I've seen those movies, you know, the, the dogs will not let loose. And there's one type of dog, and it could be any breed, that's actually the worst type. And I call it the sneak attack dog. In 20 years of being a mailman, I've only been bitten once. I'm going up to this one house. It happens to be German shepherds outside, two German shepherds. A guy's working in the yard. I say, are the dogs all right? He says, Oh, yeah, they've never bitten anybody. <laughs> yeah, you know you're in trouble when they say that. I walk up to the house. I'm watching, I'm watching the one dog in the one hand. I'm trying to look at the mail, make sure I don't, you know, give them too much of the neighbor's mail. All of a sudden, in the back, this dog grabs me by the leg and starts shaking me. It was a sneak, it was a sneak attack. It was sort of like I was back in Vietnam and the Kong had invaded. I mean, what sort of mean man, even a rattlesnake, you know, gives you a warning. So the sneak attack dog, if you don't hear any barking or growling or even, you know, anything like that, you're in big trouble. And then what does the post office give you to defend yourself? <laughs> this is dog spray. You know what this is? This is canned taco sauce. This, this stuff will not, will not stop a rabbit. In fact, when we have Mexican at home, you know, I say, honey, pass the tacos, give me some lettuce and cheese, and give me a little of that dog spray to put on there, huh? It's very tasty. Will not stop a dog. <laughs> and did you know that I've even had to stop a dog from killing another dog? Unbelievable. Pretty scary stuff. I'm walking down the street. Little cute puppy on a leash, you know, tied up to the house. The owner's gone. German Shepherd gets loose again. I don't know why I keep coming. German Shepherd <laughs> comes down to where I am. All of a sudden, the dog goes crazy and attacks this little puppy. And it's grabbing, it's going, Arr! it's shaking this dog. It's going, rah, 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 rah. and I'm standing there. Now, this is not in the manual. They don't tell you what to do in a situation like this. But, you know, I'm a good boy scout. I, mean, I cannot let one dog kill another dog. And all you're standing there. So I've got my trusty dog spray. I get within two inches of the dog's eye. I'm spraying it directly into his eye. Nothing. It does nothing to the dog. Finally, I start, I say, well, I'll give him the old uh, football technique. I start kicking this dog. Rah, rah, rah. Nothing, nothing stopping this dog. And finally, I'm, I'm getting panicky because I'm afraid this little dog is going to get killed. So finally, there's a boulder on the ground. I mean, like a 50-pound boulder. I lean down, I grab this thing, and I go, Wah! That got his attention. <laughs> finally, you know, that dog left the little puppy alone. But you can imagine, my heart's going, <laughs> pretty scary stuff. Pretty sc Even in Vietnam, I didn't have hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> and last but not least, you would think that when you go home, you're finally, the day is done, you're, you're going to relax, that dogs would leave you alone. Not true. Good friend of mine, Julie, she lives on the route. I'm home, 5 o'clock, she gives me a call. Tom, Tom, Murphy the dog bit me again. German Shepherd again. He bit me. I can't find my husband. Bob's not around, nobody's here. Can you take me to the hospital? <laughs> She, her arm is all mangled up from this stupid dog that bit her. So I've got to run over to the house, you know, get her in the car, take her to the hospital. We're in there, you know, she's in the wheelchair. We're in the admitting room. She's filling out the forms. And the nurse is saying, now, your name and address and stuff like this. And I'm standing back there. And she says, oh, and is this your husband? She says, no, this is a mailman. <laughs>
So let me just say, the next time you have to pay 29 cents for your letter, think of me doing hand-to-hand -hand combat out there. Maybe it's worth that price.